Hey there, welcome back to Floating City Podcast. This is episode one of a podcast series called Healthy Choices, where I like to, I'm going to start talking about different healthy choices, all health-based ideas and concepts that you can apply to your life. I, though not everyone has the opportunity to live a 100% healthy lifestyle in the way that maybe is ideal for most people or <clears throat> yeah that's ideal for most people you do have the choice to do better every day you have healthier choices in your life so i wanted to create this t- um, podcast as a conversation that can stimulate that option in their brain you know some i talk about healthy eating all the time how important it is how it's the foundation to everyone's health and I get a lot of people saying like, oh, there's some, so many people that don't have that option. There's single mothers out there. There's people that don't even have the, um, that knowledge to switch over to that. And my, that's, to me, it's an excuse, not in the sense that everyone in the world can eat healthy organic food and hike all the time and do all these exercises. Not in that way. The excuse being that we always have healthier options to choose from. And that's where this podcast series was born from this idea that we do have healthier choices and that's what we're going to explore i totally empathize with anyone that's going through a situation where they don't feel like they have that option in their life but there is always a healthier option so let's get on with it before i continue i am a skinographer so check out my work i do nature-based skinography if you're into art if you're into um into nature this is I explore this in the almost microscopic world that lives in a scanograph. If you don't know what scanography is, I on my YouTube channel, I have all different um, videos talking about it. You can purchase my work as NFTs. You can support me that way as an artist. And um, yeah, you can connect with me on Instagram, on my personal Instagram as well, but on my scanography Instagram, personal one, I'll leave all my social media stuff down below. I'm on Twitter as well. So yeah, check that out. Okay, today's episode of Healthy Choices is going to be about nature deprivation and nature therapy. These are two. One's a problem and the other one is the solution to it. And this came from um, an idea. The nature deprivation um, was something, a actual, actually a interviewee I've had on here. His name's Rami. And he talks about, he has a couple of glamping sites here in, not a couple, a lot here in um, actually this area, Mount Laguna, as well as in California, Southern California. It's called Alter Experiences. And then he also has a new location in Mexico, him and his wife. And he talks about nature deprivation and how we're so disconnected from nature and we're so fearful of nature. And there's um, almost like a conspiracy against nature with like, horror movies like jaws making us scared of the ocean and like these like uh like being like the blair witch project like being out in the woods and something's happening or like um oh um there's another one where people are in the desert and getting killed by these mutants or whatever so there's like this like almost fear in the media being put out maybe not intentional maybe we're just you know maybe that's just where our minds are at and this is just where um, you know, that's, that's just the expression of where our minds are at, at the moment. Or there is an actual conspiracy of people trying to get us scared of nature. You know, we, who knows? But um, the reality is that we are constantly taking steps back, whether it's fearful, literal fearful ideas of nature in that way, or, you know, um, Lyme disease nowadays is like being people having Lyme disease and being scared of ticks. So now a bunch of people aren't going outside. And then Um, you know, natural disasters always being put on the media and, um, there's just so much, so much stuff that when it comes to the media, they're very responsible for a lot of this fear as well as, um, you know, we're just, uh, in a lot of ways scared of being outside by ourselves and hiking alone. I hike alone all the time. You know, there's more of a risk, honestly, driving over to the hike than actually going on the hike yourself. So there's all these ideas, right? And, um, we're, and also with technology, with, um, you know, uh, social media, with YouTube, I'm, you know, I a hundred percent, I get it. We're so 
deprived from nature in so many ways. Y'all, we are natural creatures. That's just a reality. We need to eat natural foods for us to sustain our life. Whether it's plant or animal foods, we need this to stay sustain our life. Um, and you, you see what happens with people that live off of crazy processed package stuff. Like, that's just, that's not a road that goes very long, you know? Uh, so this is, we need to go back to nature. This is a necessity. And as the years go by, I notice, as well as Rami noticed, generations, we're just more and more detached from nature. People are staying indoors, staring at their iPads. Kids are just staring at screens and staring at screens and not enjoying their time outside. They're being scared of going outside, scared of the sun. There's so many, so many things that are detaching us from the natural world, y'all. This is really important that we have to go back. My thing is we have to prioritize, first be aware that this is even happening. So that's the nature deprivation. It's not a fear, but it definitely is an awareness that, hey, there is a force pulling us from being close to nature. Um, I kind of prioritize, this spot I go to all the time. This is a spot that is, there's only one parking spot here on the highway that you can actually get to. And uh, you go... You just you have to cross country walk to this point, and um, I spend a lot of time in nature by myself. I understand that's not everyone, and this is not. I'm not telling people that they have to be this way, where you go out on your own and you know hike by yourself, bring friends or whatever. Um, but I do think it's important that we are going back to nature. Okay, back to nature deprivation because I can go off on a tangent with that. There is this force that is pulling us away from nature whether it's through the media whether it's through just within ourselves and through circumstantial stuff like work a lot of us work a lot not even by choice like we really need to put we're mothers we're fathers we're um you know college students we just work all the time we're creators we're social media creators and for me i know i work all the time and sometimes if i if you don't prioritize it yourself you will end up in a world that's devoid of nature. There's some, I live out here in the country, y'all. Okay, this is not abnormal here. This view, gorgeous mountains, this like, uh, like, I don't know if you can hear, but you can hear a plane far away. But other than that, there's nothing. This is very normal here where there's the silence of everything no nature i mean like sometimes just maybe the wind maybe some birds but that's it even out here in the country in the back country of san diego county there's still people that don't go out and take advantage of this i don't blame them i'm not saying that this is you know i'm not saying that to point judgment or whatever i'm not it's i'm just saying that this is this is the norm for us you know just because you live in an area that is abundant with nature does not mean that you um, take advantage of that. We have to prioritize it ourselves. That's my point is that we have to go out of our way and be like, this is something I need in my life and I need to do it. So whether you live, you have the choice, healthy choices. You have the choice of, even if you live in the city, you can take your ass out and p place it in natural settings. You know what I mean? You can prioritize that. A lot of us spend that live in the city, that feel like we can't leave, spend two, three, four hours watching Netflix. And those are times where you could really invest, listen to the wordage here, invest in putting your time into going out in nature. That's where our healing will come from. I really believe that our we're all so sick as a society, it, it, emotionally, inter, inter, like within our relationships, as well as physically because we're so disconnected from nature in a lot of ways. And this thing seems more like a concept, but I'll get into more, um, you know, a real ways of pra like practical ways that we can get um, a lot closer than we are. Um, but yeah, so that's all nature deprivation. We need, we really need to prioritize that. It does not matter if you live in the back country, in the city, no one's practicing this. And it's important that we are. And this, the nature deprivation part, again, is just me getting people aware of where we're at. Um, so I was just checking, um, see how, how the mic's going. 
episode one, y'all, and we're doing this all wireless, so let's see how it goes. Um, so with that being said, nature therapy. Nature therapy, it's a strange, um, you know, it's a strange term because you get therapeutic benefit from being out in nature, though that is our why the reason why I feel so good is because that's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be closer to nature. We feel unwell when we're away from it, but in reality, it's only because we're away from our true nature. If that makes sense. Our true nature is to be in nature, or is to be as close to nature as possible, to getting more sunlight, to breathing fresh air, to drinking clean water, to eating foods that are from the earth. You know, there's a lot of people, you know. And what comes up in my mind when I say eating foods from the earth is I heard a lot of people saying there's a nature fallacy, appeal to nature fallacy when it comes to eating food from the earth. I do believe that it's more, it's eating natural foods is more beneficial. Even though I'm using the appeal to nature fallacy, I really still believe that. Um, and that is for me, a form of nature therapy, eating whole foods that are not crazy like think about it y'all we eat foods even like the meat that comes from a factory farm is so deprived of nutrients so riddled with disease the animals are and you know antibiotics it's just not optimal but then there's like free range elk that you can you know people hunt and eat that is a much better food for you than if you were to eat, you know, a, a pig that was slaughtered at, a, at a, a factory farm. And then same thing with if you go to buy conventional kale from a, a farm that does monoculture that's not organic. And you pick that and then you put it in the, um, the you bundle it up, put it in a box, in a, a refrigerator, and they take it and put it in a refrigerated uh a refrigerated truck and the truck goes to the grocery store and then the grocery store keeps it in their inventory until the next until they sell of their last batch and then they put that on the shelf and then you buy it and then you put that in your fridge and then you eat it what's the difference between that and a wild dandelion green which is edible very edible and very bio compatible with our body and the difference between both it's night literally night and day so um <sighs> one of those tangents again like i was saying so nature therapy is going back to nature i believe in eating wild edible greens and berries and going back to that state we can still do that in a lot of the areas in the country i live in the high desert i see wild edible foods here you know um and it, when i lived in massachusetts I would see a lot of wild edible greens and um, mushrooms and um, uh, wild blueberries and other berries that were out in nature in the fall winter time. They still had them. And then I also lived in Oregon. Same thing. Ton of wild edible greens. Just the, the act of going out into nature, picking these, harvesting them, and then eating it. That inter one-on-one -on -one interaction that you have with nature is so important in this day and age i don't really think people understand that and this may be one way into it so anyways tangent over but um the food is is important when it comes to um nature therapy it's like how close to nature is your food how close to nature is your lifestyle for me i kind of made it my lifestyle you know i live in a little cabin out in um a very woodsy area here in san diego county and um, plan to keep it that way. And whether wherever I move, I would like to keep it very close to nature. Though I still love love connecting to, with people on the internet and online and putting content like this out there. I very much enjoy it. But making sure that there is that interaction environmentally. You know what I mean? There's a food aspect and then there's the environmental aspect. Making sure you're breathing in fresh air all the time. Y'all, the city life... It's hard, you know, it's so toxic. I mean, I, I was reading this, um, pro, this, like, you know, it's an idea. It, I don't think it's, there's a really heavily researched science, but this idea that, um, when we are 
people that live in the city, there's more um, deaths and worse um, cases of COVID than out in the country. A, because the con- in the country, we're all more spread out. There's a lot of aspects to it. But one huge reason is the mix between light pollution, which is a fluorescent lights that mess, totally mess with our circadian rhythm, which help us sleep, which help, help us digest our food and all that. And then the noise pollution, which is the sirens at night and all the, you know, gunshots and, you know, all that kind of stuff, depending on what city you live in. But for sure, you know, there's a lot of extra and then just a humming of the highway. And then also, of course, air pollution, water pollution, all of these things, y'all. It's like it's great. And then the combination of all that together is a reason why percentage wise cities get hit worse with um, COVID. Of course, an idea not I don't think it's a very heavily sci- scientifically um, studied thing, but I I have a feeling that that has some truth to it. So really, y'all, like I say, prioritize your time in nature. You don't have to switch to my lifestyle. You know, I understand that this is not for everyone. It works for me. And I this is really with my core beliefs and my belief system and how I move around in the world, this is what works for me, at least at the moment. Um, I would like to see in the future, this is probably a huge future, very far ahead, maybe not even in my lifetime, but metropolis city type areas where it's all interacting with nature. You know what I mean? Because right now it's, we cut down a ton of trees, poured concrete over everything, built a bunch of businesses and, you know, um, it, it's just, it heavily affects the landscape. Not only does it affect the landscape and, but it affects the people. It affects the environment. Y'all we're a mess. Let's just be real about it. It's, it's not, um, our ma- big major cities, San Diego, Los Angeles, um, uh, the big one, Sa- not Sacramento, probably Sacramento as well, but, um, um, but yeah, all the big cities here in California, Boston, it's just like, there's, we're very detached from nature and you could see how it's affecting people. If you have this awareness, you can look around and you'll notice how it's affecting people. Most people are just in it, so they don't really get it. But if you know, you know, and you can see it and you can tell anyways, tangent over, but nature therapy, there's a ton of ways that apply it to you. Like I said, natural foods for sure. And then um, environmentally, if you can get out on a hike, nature hike, even in the park in your city or something, get some sunlight on you, breathe fresh air or um, any of that. And another way is taking your shoes off and putting your feet on the ground and really, really planting your foot on the ground barefoot because the rubber, the I've read a couple of things about the everything has electricity, you know, the earth has a charge, plants have a charge, rocks and minerals have a a charge, like an electrical charge, and the earth has it, and rubber will totally cut off that electrical charge from anything, you know, we use rubber to cut off, so when you take off your shoes and put it on the bare ground, you're connecting yourself to the electrical charge of the earth, This is not some metaphysical, conceptual woo-woo thing. This is a reality. You know what I mean? And we're, again, so disconnected. That's another thing that detaches us from the earth, literally from our earth. So, you know, um, there's a reason why we feel so good after we feel the sun on us or after we feel like this brush of like wind from like a really like fresh like the temperature of the wind is just like perfect and you're just feeling it in your hair and your ears and everything. There's a very therapeutic aspect to that. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's my point with this episode is like nature, going back to nature in whatever way we can. I'm going to make some more videos on my personal YouTube channel, different practical things to get back to nature in that way. But I do want to stress that we become aware. Anyone that's listening to this, open your awareness to the fact that we are natural beings. There's a reason why things are out of whack right now. It's not for nothing. 
It's not like, oh, we going through another kind of thing. It's like we are very disconnected. As much as we are connected to, like I said, the internet and the um the technological world and everything, we are disconnecting ourselves from this this aspect of it. And y'all, you can't tell me, even look people, there's not a lot of people that like hiking and camping and all that. I get it. But just looking at how vast the biodiversity of rocks and the shadows in the mountain and the biodiversity of the plants, it's there's something that just does something to you. As a human, we it's built in us. So let's get back to it, y'all. Like this is not I'm real this is a uh yeah, this is this is something I'm I'm very it's very important to me and I want people to wake up to it because I not everyone will get this message, but I know the people that get it get it and they understand what I'm talking about and and I think that I just want to reach out to those people. Not I think. I I know that I want to reach out to those people. So anyways, <sighs> I think that's it. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad I got this moment. I'm going to go on a hike after this. I'm going to, there's this, this is like one little chunk and this goes out this way and all these rocks are like the spine. I'll show a little clip of it here. It's this spine of rocks and um, it, it just, it's like at the edge of a cliff and it's overlooking this ranch and it's gorgeous. And I'm just going to hike the whole thing. It's cross country. So there's no real trail. I'm just kind of like exploring on my own. And um, I'm happy to be here. I'm so grateful that I have a platform, a very small platform, but a platform where I get to interact with people. And people do listen, which is crazy, but people do listen. And I am so grateful for that. So thank you for everyone that's watching. Have a good rest of your day. Get out into nature, y'all. Even if you can open your door and breathe in the fresh air that's outside, wherever you are. And add to the comment section if you agree or disagree with me. Also, a reminder, I'm a skinographer, all nature-based artwork, beautiful, y'all, I say beautiful because it's hard for me to take credit for this work, but truly, because, you know, I'm taking little plants and butterflies and moths and adding it to my scanner, scanning it, and then editing the, like, I definitely take credit for the composition, but the beauty that's already there, I'm getting straight from nature, so I can't really take credit for it gorgeous stuff I, even me looking at it, i'm like oh my god i'm you know i love it so if i i as the artist like it i'm sure there's someone out there that'll like it as well um uh, and if you would like to purchase be one of my investors and purchase an nft you be a supporter in this <laughs> you can you know and contact me if you do i'm so grateful for the people that have supported me till today and purchased my nfts and support me in any way even by liking or subscribing to this and um anyways this is taking a long time to say bye but thank you so much again y'all get out into nature enjoy yourself what else is there what else in this life what else is there to do other than to show up in our world in our with our best selves and the best way to do that in my opinion is coming out and connecting that's it (laughs) thank you